of October. And I love October for one reason and one reason only. Baseball playoffs. Oh, yeah. Now, now, of course, earlier this week, I was, of course, disappointed because my Yankees got knocked out by the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, exactly. Boo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, of course, now, of course, in Boston right now, there are pastors saying, yeah, Red Sox, yeah. Well, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. But, but as I think about my Yankees, I think that, you know, they're, they are always up there. Every single year in the playoffs, they're, they're always fighting. And the, and the rich history of this organization just amazes me. I mean, just all the legendary players, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Mickey Mantle, Joe DiMaggio, Derek Jeter. Oh my goodness, the list goes on and on and on. But this morning, I, if I may, I, I want to speak about a player who, he was good, but he was really iconic for his famous sayings. Many of you know him as Yogi Berra. Yeah, Yogi. We love Yogi. Yeah. Now, now Yogi had these uh, funny sayings and they are referred to as yogiisms. Yogiisms. So I'm going to give you a few yogiisms this morning. So let's get right into it. Number one, one of the things that Yogi said was this. He said, if you don't know where you're going, you might not get there. Think about that one. If you don't know where you're going, you might not get there. That's a good one. Here, here's my favorite. My favorite's this. He, he once said, if the people don't want to come to the ballpark, Nobody's going to stop them. I don't know. Think about that one. That's a good one, too. But of course, his famous saying, and you probably all know it, just, so get ready now for it. It's, it ain't over till it's over. It ain't over till it's over. Oh, man, I love this phrase. And the reason I love this phrase is because the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear it is, don't give up. It ain't over till it's over. See, some of you this morning are in your own bottom of the ninth inning. And it looks like you're going to lose. You already feel defeated. And there's a part of you that wants to give up. You're facing a, a hopeless situation. And you're just about to throw the towel in. And you're about to say, I I'm done. I've lost this battle. Well, this brings me to my question for this morning. What should you do? when you feel like giving up? What should you do when you feel like giving up? This morning I want to give you three things that you should do when you feel like giving up. So let's get right into it. Number one, the first thing that you should do when you feel like giving up, believe God. Believe God. I want you to turn into your Bibles this morning and we're going to look at the book of Luke. Luke chapter 8, verses 49 through 50. Luke chapter 8, verses 49 through 50. As you're turning there, I want to give you a little background of what's actually going on here. So there is this man named Jairus. And Jairus is the ruler of the synagogue. Jairus has a 12-year-old daughter who is at this particular time on her deathbed. And so Jairus goes to Jesus, and he says to Jesus, you got to come to my house. My daughter is about to die. you got to come and heal her. That's all you need to know at this point. So Luke chapter 8, verse 49 through 50, it says this. While he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, Do not be afraid. Only believe. And she will be made well. So here we have, in this particular passage, we have somebody coming from Jairus's house. And he comes and he tells Jairus, your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher anymore. What, he, what this particular person was really telling Jairus was, it's over. You've lost. Give up. Don't bother with this Jesus. He can't help you now. 
What does Jesus tell Jairus? Jesus says, do not be afraid. Only believe and she will be made well. Those two powerful words, only believe. What Jesus was really telling Jairus was, don't do anything else. Don't fear, don't doubt. The only thing I need you to do is believe. Wow. And so, what we find here is, well, Jairus has a choice to make here. He could either listen to the person that came from his house and he could hear those words of your daughter is dead. He could, he could have done that. He could have said, oh, it's over. I, I, I give up. I, I'm done here. He could have turned to Jesus and, and said to Jesus, well, th thanks anyway for your help. I, I'm going to go home and mourn. Or he could believe the words of Jesus and believe that Jesus was going to raise his daughter up. What did he do? He believed Jesus. Some of you this morning are kind of in the same scenario. See, you're facing a situation that looks dead. And people in your life are coming to you and they're telling you, it's over. Give up. Throw the towel in. Don't, don't bother with this God stuff. God can't help you. And then you have God on the other hand. And you know what God's saying to you this morning? He's saying, it ain't over till I say it's over. Only believe. Don't give up. That's the message. Don't give up. Believe God. Now, my first point is believe God. Now, some of you might be saying to yourself, all right, I just got a question for you, Pastor James. What kind of English classes did you go to in high school? Believe God. That's not grammatically correct. You probably mean believe in God. No, I don't mean that. I mean believe God. See, there's a difference between believe, God, believe in God and believe God. And I'll tell you what the difference is. When a person says, I believe in God, what they are referring to is the existence of God. So what they're saying, really saying is, I believe that God exists. Now, if somebody says that, hey, that's great. That's awesome. Praise God. I love to hear that. And then there are some other people that say, oh, I believe in God. And then you, you, you'll say to them, oh, that, that's great. So how's your prayer life? Well, I, I don't pray to him. I, I don't think he really talks anymore like he used to in the Bible days. I, I don't really think he does miracles like he did in the biblical days. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying to you, believe God. Believe God is able to turn around your hopeless situation. Believe God is able to do, the, to do a miracle in your life today. That's what I'm talking about. So the next question then really is this. How do we believe God? And the answer is very simple. We believe God by trusting in God. We believe God by trusting in God. Well, then... Now, now the next step is this, is how do we trust in God? And the answer to that question is another simple one. We trust in God by giving him complete control of our situation. I find it really interesting in studying this passage of Scripture here that after Jesus tells Jairus, only believe, the rest of the context, the rest of the whole passage Jairus doesn't say one other word. He doesn't speak at all after that. Now, the reason I find this interesting is because it was as if Jairus was telling Jesus, I trust you. I'm giving you complete control of this situation. I'm stepping away. I'm going to let you do what you got to do. I'm not going to interfere anymore. And so what happened? Well, because of it, Jesus raises the girl to life again. If you look at verses 54 through 55, it says this. But he put them all outside, took her, took her by the hand, and called 
saying, little girl, arise. Then her spirit returned, and she arose immediately. And he commanded that she be given something to eat. When you trust in God, and you give him complete control of your situation because you believe he is able to turn that situation around for you, that is when he's going to raise up that dead situation back to life again and turn it around in your favor. Believe God. You know why? Because it ain't over till God says it's over. Once you believe God, that's when you can pray to God. And that brings me to the second point. So the first point, the first thing that we should do when we feel like giving up, believe God. Number two, the second thing that you should do when you feel like giving up, pray to God. Pray to God. I want you to turn with me now. We're going to look at 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. And as you're turning there, let me give you a little understanding of what's going on in this passage of Scripture. So we have this woman. Her name is Hannah. And Hannah wants a child but she is unable to have children so it's this she's in this hopeless situation and she could have very easily given up she could have said oh, well I want a child but I can't have it I just I give up I guess I guess that's not not for me in my life I, I'll never have children that's it but the reality and the truth is she didn't give up. She didn't do that. Well, what did she do? Ah, good question. Check it out. The answer is found here in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. It says this, And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. So what did she do? She prayed to God. And because she prayed to God, the Lord did a miracle in her life. And she did conceive a son. And his name was Samuel. This morning, many of you are in this hopeless situation. And it doesn't look good. But I want to encourage you. Don't give up. Pray to God. Because when you pray to God, that is when he's going to birth within you a miracle. So now that we understand that we have to pray to God, now the question is, what do we do when we pray to God? What do we do when we pray to God? And the answer is very simple. The answer is believe. Believe. You don't have to, you don't have to turn there, but in Mark chapter 11, verses 23 through 24. Mark chapter 11, verses 23 through 24. We have Jesus speaking here. And this is what he says. He says, For... For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So how does this work? Well, I'm going to give you two different examples of prayer to show you. So the first example is a doubtful prayer. This is a prayer that we do not want to do. This is thumbs down. This is not a good prayer at all. So it goes something a little like this. Uh, God, if you're listening, uh, I would like you to help me out in this particular situation. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand that you're busy. I, I, I get it, I get it. But if you can somehow fit me into your schedule, I, I would really appreciate that. See, I, I, I kind of know that you have this power, but I'm not sure if you can really help me in this area. But if you can, I would be really grateful. That's not a prayer you want to pray. There's, there's doubt there. You're questioning who he is. So we don't want that. We want a prayer where we're believing God. And so 
Here's the second example. This is a prayer of believing. This is what we want to do. This is thumbs up. This is a good prayer. This is, it goes a little like this. Heavenly Father, I thank you just for who you are. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your authority, Lord. Lord God, you know my heart. You know what I'm dealing with, Lord God. I give it into your hands now. I know you're going to turn this thing around for me right now. And for that, I thank you for it. I bless your name, Lord God. Do it right now. Move, Lord God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's a prayer you want to pray. Because when you pray like that, that's when God's going to move. So pray believing, knowing who God is. And it goes back once again to the first point, believe God. When you believe God is able to do it, that's when you're going to pray. Pray believing, and when you pray believing, that's when God's going to move on your behalf. And he's going to turn that hopeless situation out for your benefit. Pray to God. You know why? <laughs> because it ain't over until God says it's over. After you pray to God, then you worship God. After you pray to God, you worship God. And this brings me to my third and my final point. So the first two points again. First two things that you should do when you give up. When you feel like giving up. Excuse me. When you feel like giving up, first two things. Believe God. And number two, pray to God. And finally, the third thing that we should do when we feel like giving up, worship God. Worship God. I want you to go with me now. And we're going to look at Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. And as you're turning there, let me explain to you what's going on here. So we have Paul and Silas. And they're in prison at this particular time. And they, too, could have just given up. They, there they were. They were bound up in chains in prison. They, they could have said, well, I, I guess God forgot about us. You know, you know, there's no way out here, so we're just going to be here for the rest of our lives. They could have done that. But they didn't. So what did they do? Ah, check it out. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. It says this. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. So what did they do? They prayed, and then they sang hymns to God. Ah. Now, I understand, and, and, well, and singing hymns, we, we know that's worship, right? So they were, they were worshiping God. They prayed, and then they worshiped God. Now, I, I understand why they prayed to God. That, that makes sense. They're in jail. They're praying to God that God would deliver them. That, that completely makes sense. But why were they worshiping? I mean, here they are in prison. The situation's really bad. There's no way out. Why are you worshiping God? Ah, let me explain. You see, what we know about Paul and Silas throughout Scripture, these guys were two mighty men of God, which means that their faith was so strong that they believed that God was able to do anything. So it went back to what? The first point. They believed God. And because they believed God was able to do anything, what did they do? They prayed, right? And they prayed believing that God was going to turn this thing around for them. And after praying, they knew that God was going to do it. They already knew that their prayer was answered. They knew that God was on the move for them. And because they knew that God was going to deliver them from prison, what did they do? They worshiped. We give you glory, God. We thank you that you're going to deliver us from this place. They worshiped. And so what happened when they worshiped? Well, check it out. Look at the very next verse, verse 26. It says, Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were were loosed. So in their time of worship, God moved and broke the chains that had bound them. See, some of you this morning feel like you're in this hopeless situation. You are imprisoned and you are bound up 
with hopelessness. But I want to encourage you this morning. Don't give up. Worship God. Get to the place where you're going to praise Him because you know He's on the move for you. You're going to praise Him for who He is. You're going to praise Him because what you know is that He's already answered your prayer and He's going to set you free and He's going to do a miracle in your life. See, when you worship God, that's when God's going to move for you and He's going to break those chains of hopelessness. He's going to break those chains of depression. And when He does, you're going to see a miracle in your life. Don't give up. Worship God. You know why? Because it ain't over till God says it's over. In conclusion, let me say this. Don't ever give up. Believe God. Pray to God. And worship God. When you do these three things, that's when God's going to turn this situation around for you and give you the victory in the end. At this particular point, excuse me, at this particular time, but I want, I, want to do, I want to do a little altar call here. For those people that are, you're, you're just on the verge of giving up. You're facing a terrible situation and you feel like you've lost. Well, I want you to come down here this morning and I'm going to pray with you. We're going to pray together and we're going to pray believing that God's going to turn this thing around for you. And when, after we pray, we're going to have Bob and the worship team come up here and they're going to lead us into worship and we're just going to give God the glory for answering our prayer and give, just give him glory for who he is. So I want you to come down if, if you need prayer, and we're just going to pray. Just a really simple group prayer. And What's that? No, no, they, they can just stand at the thing. Hey. Hi. Amen.